What inspired the, the start of the festival really was um, the need to plug the gap between the preponderance of images that represent a stereotypical Africa. The fact that a lot of photographers come here to work here and produce amazing work, but we never get to see this work shown on the continent. We see the work shown in various exhibitions and festivals all across the world, but never seen in um, Nigeria or in, uh, in Africa. for the festival in the opening and um, well uh, I've been invited to show this series and this is like a, possibly one of the most exciting things that have happened to me uh, in this crazy year that I've had. AAF, Azu, um, the entire uh, Lagos Photo team is a brilliant team and, um, I'm, and I feel really honored to work with them. Yeah, the theme of the festival this year is the mega city and the non-city and we're looking at two sides of photography and two sides of the city. So with the mega city, we're looking at developing urban centers in Africa and, and the vast rate of change in places like Lagos, whether that be population explosion, urban development, socioeconomic changes. Uh, the other side, what we're calling the non-city, is looking at how uh, our sense of place is defined by technological changes. I wanted to show African photography, meaning photography created by Africans or created in Africa, in Africa. So uh, Lagos Photo's whole point is to exhibit that to those who would, who would potentially have been closer to it than they would be on the outside. So each year since we started the festival, we've always had workshops, we've always had um, artist talks, we've always had critical um, essays, we've also had um, group discussions, seminars and that sort of thing. We have both documentary and photojournalism in the exhibition and we also have artists that work in more expanded practices using images, using photography, but not necessarily taking a picture with the camera, but looking at the circulation of images. The Lagos Photo Festival is the first and only um, festival of photography here in Nigeria. And this is our fourth year. I think in the four years we've had incredible growth in terms of content and attendance and also um, ownership. From inception, we've been supported by Tisalat Nigeria as well as Echo Hotel and Suites. They are our title sponsors. The Lagos Photo Gala was um, started, was created based last year. It was initially the Lagos Photo Fundraiser, and this year it became the Lagos Photo Gala. Now, what Lagos Photo is trying to do is basically create an avenue using works from Lagos Photo and have had some kind of relationship with Lagos Photo to raise funds for the foundation, which ultimately supports photography. As a foundation, we're very, very proud to be here and to show this exhibition of the best of photojournalism in a context of a photography festival in Nigeria is, is a unique opportunity, which we're very, very uh, uh, pleased with, very proud of. Big pride that you, you have won a World Press Award. It's like winning a Nobel laureate. Because, but it's not well known in Nigeria, but it's coming, because it's coming means that, you know, it's going to be part of the revolution that is going on in Nigeria, in photographic industry in Nigeria now. But I used to tell people that we haven't seen anything. Things are really going to change, and it's changing fast. And part of that uh, revolution is the World Press Award that has just, you know, been shown here today. We 
weird experiments and uh, incredible stories. And that is, well, uh, doing this research on, on Google, I found the list of the 10 most crazy experiments in history. And the first one on the list was the Zambian space program. It was a link to an interview that uh, Reuters was doing to the leader of the project. And uh, he was explaining how he was, he was training a group of astronauts. And he, there were some images that are, were, were like very intentionally, um, I mean, they were made basically to make fun of these people. And I thought it was like, okay, they're not getting the big thing here behind. That is, there is people who actually think they can go to the moon. And that is something universal. And I thought it was really worth giving it a try and um, try to document this positive thing that the dream that everybody can have to go to the moon, despite if you're an African or you're an American and work for NASA. I'm participating here at the Lagos Photo Festival with uh, my work, The Plantation Boy, which has to do with identity. The AAF African Artists Foundation, the TNICP uh, Photo Garage, um, and the Lagos Photo Festival, they are all contributing to the growth of the Nigerian visual art uh, scene. And what we are trying to do is to create a new visual language for the Nigerian art sector where we kind of use what we have and make it an indigenous setting. One photograph, actually there are two photographs of Lagos in, uh, in, in my uh, part of this exhibition. Uh, one, is, one photograph is, uh, uh, is the, the parking lot in uh, Jankara Market, which uh, is a very surprising place for me because uh, you see the, the, that the, par, the car is more powerful than the, than the people. Uh, the car takes most of the space, uh, of the urban space, and the market is pushed to the alleys of the city. I, I like places that become unfunctional, where, there is, where the city stands still for, for a while. Because I was really trying to protest this reductive gaze of, uh, of Africa, um, this reductive um, uh, notion of certain ideas that are associated with the continent that are particularly negative. Um, and I wanted to protest them, and I'm protesting them with my nudity, I'm protesting them uh, because I think that it's also strange how uh, we have this seductive relationship to violence, and we're particularly interested in seeing Africa and African bodies or black bodies um, in a particular light um, that is generally negative. Winding down this week uh, with this party in the park, where we have um, we partnered with Picnickers Anonymous. We partnered with Socially Games, and so they're coming here. We have music. We want to just bring the public in and let them experience the outdoor um, images, which are brought here by PopCap. Um, so, which is a photo award, and uh, we have a lot of a lot of the inter interesting works which we're showing here today. We support local photographers. We do what we can to let photography breathe a little bit better here by. Um, having all of our workshops, artist lectures, and receptions like this where people can just come and see and be inspired. My uh, career as a photographer sort of bloomed as a result of uh, an exhibition like this. Lagos Photo has brought that type of exhibition to Lagos. They are now bringing those photographers from all over the world down to Nigeria. What I'm saying is that the caliber of photographers that they have brought in uh, has taken it to a completely different level. And the curating and the organizing of it, world class. We have Martin Parr here this year who's um, a very, very wonderful, world-renowned photographer as well. I'm impressed by the festival. It's a small festival but quite good quality work uh, with lots of uh, uh, people from uh, all over the world who've taken pictures not only in Nigeria but in Africa and of course you also get to see some Nigerian photographers too. So I think it's a good healthy mix uh, and uh, I encourage what they do. I hope they go from strength to strength. started by the African Artist Foundation. It's a competition which um, engages artists in Nigeria. Um, the goal is to find new talent. So we have a two-week retreat where uh, facilitators come who are um, 
you know, artists, um, established artists in their own right. It ends in an exhibition um, where people are able to come and experience the works themselves. Um, and then um, the, it's judged by a panel of uh, art experts. And so um, at the end of it all, there is a first prize, second prize, third prize winner. Prize, they're allowed the opportunity to exhibit their works in a solo exhibition. So it really offered the opportunity to have kind of a springboard and, and kind of jumpstart um, their career. My name is Sei Sutile Gyado. I feel, I still can't believe I've won. So I'm feeling tremendously elated, excited. Um, I'm full of disbelief. I cannot believe I've won, but I feel honored more than anything and um, overwhelmed. My piece is called Identitrees and I'm talking about trees of identity in the information age. So for a very long time, Nigeria has been spoken about and depicted, but through telecommunications, the information age has enabled us to be able to express our identity in our own words, tell our own story for the very first time in history. I'm exploring the symbols of this change and I looked at the motifs of the cityscape which were the trees. These were broadcasting masks, billboards and electricity poles. So I formed these trees as symbols of the information age and how identity is both informed and expressed through them. Contemporary visual culture today is um, the biggest thing there is. And by that I mean um, um, people are becoming increasingly, increasingly more literate about images. And so, whereas maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, an image probably didn't communicate as much as it does as, as it will today. Today, everyone understands photography somewhat. Everyone has a phone, everyone has uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, all of these um, various social media are strongly based on images. And images are really the currency of communication today whether it be it in advertising, be it in literature, where you have to use strong imagery and text to communicate the color of the text. And so when you have um, this sort of overlap between subculture and evolving culture among the youth, and you have the tools to communicate, then you, you know, it's, a, it's very difficult to imagine how it will explode.